least maintain control so they can go through the Suez Canal to get to their colonies, right? Yeah. Asia. And third group? Third group? Russia. Russia. Why does Russia need control of this area? Because it's their only warm water All right, port. they got warm water port here. They got military ships in there. They've got their regular ships. They got to be able to get out of here. It's a real narrow area in here called the Dardanelles. So they want to be able to control this area as well. And this area right here, which we call the Balkans, is going to be um, their cousins. Okay, this is the a Slavic area, and the Russians want to be able to control that as well. Okay, now let's go back to my famous pictures. Hold on a second. Draw the letters of the countries we're going to be talking about, and you're going to tell me which ones they are. You ready? England. England. France. France. Russia. Russia. Germany. Germany. Austria. Austria. Hungary. Italy. Italy. Okay. Serbia. And then we've got Serbia, right? Serbia. Now, kind of right here. Alright, so those are our players. Yesterday, we spoke about Continue. the alliance system by business. So let's go over that again. What was the first alliance we talked about? Alright, so who is Germany's little brother? Austria. Austria Hungary. Who is Russia's little brother? Serbia. Serbia. Okay, so in this case, we're going to start with Germany because they're the ones. Uh, that are going to make all these alliances. So, Germany's going to make an alliance with Austria Hungary called the what? Dual alliance. The dual alliance, which means what? Two. Two. So, it's just those two. Then, who is Germany always afraid France is going to become friends with? Russia. Russia. Russia, that's right. So, Germany, and they're always going to, for the most part, keep Austria Hungary in the loop, at least, at least for the beginning here, right? Germany, Austria Hungary, and Russia are going to make a treaty and this one's going to be called what? Triple Emperor. No. Nope. They all have emperors, and how many are there? Three There's three, right? Three. So it's going to be the three emperors. League. League. Okay? All right, cool. Now, after that's solidified, um, they obviously are on their way to making France isolated, correct? Mm -hmm. All right. What's the big one that's going to... Yeah, a triple alliance would be Germany, Austria, Hungary, and Italy. Okay, so, um, all right, triple alliance. Now, at this point, we, we know uh, from yesterday that Germany's totally not really, they, they don't, they're not sure that Russia's still going to stay out of any conflicts or whatever. Because remember, Germany's in between France and Russia. So, what did they do that doesn't involve Austria, Hungary? They're going to make the reinsurance treaty. Okay. Looks good, right? Is France isolated? Are they without friends? Okay. Why then is the alliance system, for the most part, that Bismarck created going to fall apart? Because Bismarck needs What? Bismarck's fire needs. All right, Bismarck. So what? Was, so Angelique yesterday was doing what? Juggling. She was juggling, right? And when we threw the third ball in there, what happened? All right, the, the alliance is crumbled, right? Okay, so Bismarck gets fired, and the alliances, you know, the triple alliance stays together, but the alliances that are with Russia no longer exist. Who's going to be, who's going to jump to the chance to help Russia? France. France, that's right. France is going to go there. Who's, who's been left out of this whole thing so far? England. So England and France are going to make an on- Tant, right, an agreement between nations, but they're friends and they're friends and they're like, this doesn't really make sense. Why don't we all just get together and make our own little treaty system? We're going to call it what? Triple on time. All right, the triple on time. Okay, now you've got two armed camps. This is going to put us in a position to talk about simply the chain reaction. Because as we were saying, everybody's got guns. It's just a matter of when somebody's going to fire one of their weapons, right? And that's going to create 
and alliances are going to be entangled. So, with that being said, I'm going to just erase this real quick. Okay. If we go to your notes, I don't know if you guys were filling these in, but if you go to your notes, pull this back so you, can see, you guys can see this a little bit better. Keep it on the side. Yeah. All right, cool. All right. I don't know if you guys wrote these in or not, but we're going to talk about this area here. So we're going to talk about the Balkans, okay? So, but you guys ever watch Bugs Bunny? Yes. I think it's the Roadrunner. And it's the one where they have the Acme, um, you know, company. And they make like the gunpowder and stuff like that. Do you uh -huh. ever watch the ones where they have a barrel and they're walking and there's a hole in the barrel? Yeah. And somebody's trying to get the, the rope runner, but eventually the rope runner like lights it on fire and the, and the barrel blows up. That's the powder keg. Powder keg is simply a barrel that is hold, holding gunpowder, and if you ignite it, it's going to blow up. And so this region right here above Greece, you've got Serbia and so forth, is called the Balkans. It's a region of Europe, southeastern region. And that's going to be where the powder keg is going to blow. All right? Now, um, if you look at your notes, I'm going to read some of this to you, and then I'm going to explain it, and I'm going to show you the real map as well. Austria, so Serbia, they're very nationalistic. There's a time period in history where a lot of these countries are very into their own countries. They want to create their own countries because they all speak the same language, okay? So in Serbia, it's no different, okay? There is a, a, an area right here called Bosnia-Herzegovina, okay? In Bosnia-Herzegovina, and at the time, it looks different than the map I'm going to show you up here, but I'll show you the map just so you can see where it is. Serbia was shaped differently and so forth. Over here, you've got the Adriatic Sea. This is, this is water. Now, do you know what landlocked means? What's it mean to be landlocked? Yeah. Yes. Surrounded all sides by land. Surrounded all on all sides by land. If you're trading, remember, trade makes money for your country, right? If you're landlocked, can you get your products out without asking permission from somebody else? No, you got to go through someone else's country, right? You're going to have to pay them, and what if they say no? You're not going to make any money, right? So I'll just show you this map real quick. So Bosnia Herzegovina is here. Sarajevo is going to be what we're going to be talking about in a minute. But this whole area used to be called, you know, this is Serbia. And they wanted, Serbia wanted Bosnia and Herzegovina for themselves so that they could, they could have that outlet to the sea. So what happened was, okay, they had a meeting. Uh, all the major countries had a meeting and that meeting took place in 1878. It was called the Congress of Berlin. So it was in Berlin, in Germany. And all the you know, strong countries get together and they, they decide that they're going to give Austria-Hungary Bosnia-Herzegovina and not Serbia. So Bosnia, Austria-Hungary is going to take, it's going to become a protectorate of Bosnia-Herzegovina. It's just like, you guys remember when we took Hawaii, we kind of went in and we're like, hey, you know, we're going to, we're here to protect you. And we kind of just took it. All right. So that's exactly what happened. So they, they became a protector, and that's going to really make the Serbians mad because they've been wanting that forever. They want to they be the center of a Slavic, you know, of the Slavic people, you know. So they don't get it. And so technically, Austria Hungary takes it. And then eventually, what they do is they go in and they, they're, they're not only a protector, they annex it. You guys remember what I said with that one? It's stronger than just being a protector. They, they take it over without using their weapons. And that's going to infuriate the Serbs. Now, that's where all this stuff uh, is going to come about. So, do you know what the heir to a throne is? Yes. So, uh, an heir is going to be, so like when I have kids, they're going to be my heirs. But I'm not a king or a queen or an emperor or whatever. Um, so, I don't have the royal blood per se, but in Austria they do. So the Archduke, Franz Ferdinand, is the heir to the throne. He's going to be the next leader of, of Austria-Hungary. And he goes down to, and it reminds me a lot, I know this is probably not a good analogy, but 
it always reminds me of when Kennedy went down to Dallas. So Kennedy goes down to Dallas, and he was kind of doing a goodwill mission of his own because he kind of made some Republicans mad. He was trying to repair that relationship. He went down. He's in a car. It's an open-air car. What happens to him? He gets shot. He dies. Same thing. Okay. Uh, Archduke Franz Ferdinand goes down to Sarajevo on a goodwill mission, trying to show, hey, you know, I want to work with you. He goes down there. He's with his wife. And make a long story short, there is a terrorist group, if you want to call it that, called the Black Hand. And the Black Hand are Serbian nationalists. And they're, they want to assassinate him. And what happens is, um, the, you know, he gets down there. They're in their motorcade and stuff like that. And they were trying to blow up his car. And they, they didn't blow up his car. They ended up blowing up, the, the bomb went off prematurely, and they ended up blowing up the car in front of them, realizing that they were trying to assassinate him. The driver of his car, you know, speeds off, takes the Archduke and his wife, and they go over a couple streets where they think it's safe. Ironically, one of the assassins was sitting in a restaurant or a coffee shop that was right where the car pulled over. So the car pulls over, the assassin's sitting there, and he'd actually kind of chickened out. You know, he, he didn't, you know, he left the scene, he, he chickened out, and all of a sudden he's sitting there, he's having his lunch or sandwich or whatever, and he looks out and he sees Archduke Franz Ferdinand and his wife, and he goes out and he shoots them point blank and kills them. Okay? If I get an opportunity, I'll show you guys a little movie on that. So, so what happens is the Austro-Hungarians are livid. Okay? The their, the heir to the throne is, is dead because he's Serbian, Serbian nationalist. So that is the immediate event of World War, or I'm sorry, the immediate cause of World War One. So you got your four long-term causes, right? This is the thing that starts the war. It's going to start a chain reaction, and it's going to get all these countries involved. All right, that one thing. So here's how it goes. Um, I'm going to erase this for a second. So you've got, so Austria, so who's Austria-Hungary's big brother? Germany. Germany, right? They want to declare war on Serbia, but they don't want to do it by themselves. So they're, they're going to hey, go, hey, Germany, will you back us up if we get in a war, get in a war with Serbia? And they're like, of course we will. you got to remember, Germany's kind of behind this whole thing anyway, you know? Um, they didn't orchestrate that, but they were kind of like the, you know, doing all this stuff with Bismarck, you know. So, Germany says, yeah, we'll back you up. So, instead of going to war right away, Austria-Hungary sends an ultimatum to Serbia. You guys know what an ultimatum is? Yeah. If your parents or your girlfriends or boyfriends ever given you an ultimatum, go ahead. Basically, the last resort if you don't do this. Yeah, if you don't do this, X, Y, and Z is going to happen, or X is going to happen, you know. So, they send them an ultimatum. And the ultimatum has five different items on it. Okay? And I'll just give you a couple of them. One of them is, is you have to accept these five things within two days, 48 hours. Another is that, we, that Austria-Hungary is going to take the assassins and try them in Austria-Hungary. Another one was, because remember, Austria-Hungary had kind of taken, taken over this area, you know, um, that Serbian schools and teachers would stop like, teaching against Austria-Hungary and talking crap about them and stuff like that. So... Um, they have 48 hours. And the Serbians, they can't do it. And they refuse to do some of the things anyway. So, so Austria-Hungary declares war on Serbia. Now, pay attention. Austria-Hungary declares war on Serbia. And who is Serbia's big brother? Russia. Russia. Okay, that's a babushka, because it's really cold in Russia, all right? And Russia is going to mobilize their army. What's that mean? They're going to get them ready, okay? They're going to, they're going to like, you know, start practicing for war and stuff like that. So they mobilize their army, and Germany says to the Russians, stop mobilizing. Now, do you know anything about the Russians? No. Do the Russians ever back down? No. I mean, what are they going to say? They're like, are you talking to me? 
you know, as they're hanging out and maybe having some vodka or whatnot. But um, they're like, no, you can't be talking to us, right? They never back down. And so the Germans say, well, if you don't back down, we're going to declare war on you. And they're like, well, whatever. And so the Germans then declare war on Russia. Well, who, who is Russia's allies? Okay, England and France. Now, they have a tighter bond with, with France. So, so when Germany declares war on Russia, France, a couple days later, declares war on Germany. Now, England's staying out of it for now, okay? Um, and basically, Germany kind of wanted to go after France the whole time anyway. So, make a long story short, because they're at war now, and because they were at war before, the French were smart enough to build this, a defensive line called the Maginot Line. Okay, so they, they built a defensive border between Germany and France so they couldn't come after. So if you look on the map, you'll notice that this area right here is kind of small, and you got Belgium and Switzerland down here. They created a defensive border there, which would be very tough to go through. Germany lose a lot of guys, so they're like, well, whatever. We'll go through Belgium. Well, Belgium's neutral. You know what neutral means? Yeah, like they, they don't want to be in the war, right? So Germany decides, whatever, we're going to do what we want. We're going to go through neutral Belgium. Well, neutral Belgium had a secret treaty with England. This, and they said, well, we'll protect you. If anyone ever attacks you, we'll protect you. So now England's in the war, and World War I has begun. Wow. Did you get all that? So now what we're going to do is we're going to go over it again, and we're going to you know, go through the motions, and, and I want you guys to repeat it, so that you can you can get it in your heads, okay? So, um, all right. Germany and Austria Hungary. This is the beginning. Germany and Austria Hungary make a treaty. What was it called? The dual alliance. Okay. They want to keep Russia away from France. So because of that, they pull them into a, they pull Russia and Austria Hungary into a uh, treaty called what? Three Emperors League. After that. Germany, Austria, Hungary, and Italy form an alliance. What was it called? Triple the Triple Alliance. Alliance. Germany's still not sure Russia's going to stay out of the war, and they make another one secretly with them called Reinsurance the Reinsurance Treaty. Okay. A new Kaiser comes to uh, power in, in Germany. His name's Wilhelm II or William II. He doesn't like Bismarck. What does he do? Fires. He fires Bismarck. What happens to the treaties between Germany, Austria, Hungary, and Russia? They, they fall apart. Who's quick to answer their call? France. 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 Russia's not doing so well. So France and Russia get together. They make a little treaty together. England's kind of go, hey, hey, I need some friends. Um, hey, France, you want to be our friend? And historically, as you know, the French and the English don't like each other. But when it comes down to it, you got to have somebody back in the arm, right? So England and France make a what? And on time, an agreement between nations, and they're like, look, it's three against like two and two or whatever. Let's make it three on three, and we're going to call ourselves the triple on time versus the triple alliance. Okay, we got the two armed camps just waiting for something to happen. Austria hum Hungary. Um, the Duke. Yeah, so Bosnia Herzegovina becomes a protected protectorate of Austria Hungary. Okay? Archduke Franz Ferdinand from Austria Hungary, the heir of the throne, comes down to Sarajevo on a goodwill mission. What happens to him? He gets assassinated. Okay? Austria Hungary sends what? To Serbia. Uh, An ultimatum. Ultimatum says, you do this or we're going to go to war. What does Serbia say? No. Now, before that happened, Austria Hungary asked who for help? Germany. Germany. To back him up, right? Germany. So, Serbia can't follow the ultimatum. And Austria-Hungary declares war on Serbia. All right? So the war has technically begun. Um, who mobilizes their army for Serbia? Russia. Okay. So Russia starts mobilizing their army because Serbia is their, their little brother or their cousin. What does Germany say to Russia? If you don't, stay if you don't stop mobilizing, we're going to we're gonna declare war. And what's Russia say? Are you talking to me? Okay. <laughs> they say, no, we'll do whatever we want. So Germany declares war on Russia. Two days later, who is Russia's ally? France. France, France declares war on Germany. Germany. But they can't go right after France because of this defensive border here, so they decide to go through neutral Belgium. And who has the secret treaty with them? England. England. And England's in the war. And 
pretty much all of Europe is at war. Now there's some, you know, neutral countries and stuff like that. Then, um, Italy realizes that, oh, I don't know if we really want to be on the side of the Germans. And they end up switching sides. Remember that, because later on, that will come into play. They switched sides in 1915. Then Bulgaria and the Ottoman Empire are going to join sides with Germany, successfully cutting off Russia. Okay? And they're then going to be called the Central... So they're no longer the Triple Alliance, because Italy's not in there anymore. They're going to be called the Central Powers. Do not get World War I confused with World War II. So they're the Central Powers, and Japan's not in here. Central powers are going to be Germany, Austria, Hungary, Bulgaria, and Ottoman Empire. And the other people, our side eventually, is going to be the Allies. So we don't change. World War I, World War II were the Allies. World War I, Germany is the Central Powers. World War II, they're going to be called the Axis Powers. Don't confuse the two. People do it all the time. So the Ottoman Empire and the other country, they're still part of World War I, right? Yeah, this is all World War I. Okay. So Central Powers is going to be Germany, Austria, Hungary, Bulgaria, and Ottoman Empire. Now, that's on your notes. So if you go to your notes and you go to the second page, okay, so if you go here, this gives you what you need to know. Who was in the war at the beginning? Well, you know, once the war started, and then, like I said, Italy switched sides in 1915. So, um, Germany, Austria, Hungary, Bulgaria, and Ottoman Empire, Central Powers. They're the belligerents. You guys ever see a drunk person that's like, you know the drunk fighters? You know, we want to kick everyone's butt, you know, when they're drunk. That's a belligerent. So the belligerent in this case is going to be the aggressor, all right? And the aggressor is Germany and their, um, their allies, or their counterparts. What are the strengths of Germany in the beginning of the war? Very well equipped and well trained army. They've been kind of building this up for a long time. And the allies, um, again, it's, it's going to be... Great Britain, France, and Russia, not the United States until later. However, we're going to sell weapons to, and supplies to both sides in the beginning of the war and make a boatload of money. And then later, we'll just sell things to the, uh, the allies, and then we'll get in the war. We have a greater industrial potential, which means basically the United States was, you know, supplying the allies with the necessary weapons and, and, and supplies. Questions? Sam? Do you think that we could have another world war? Absolutely. It's just a matter of time. Do you think it's going to happen soon? Um, I hope not. I hope <laughs> not. It's, you never know. But, uh, yeah, it's, you know, it's a pretty dangerous world right now, isn't it? So, hopefully not within our lifetimes, you know? Yeah. What were the last uh, three blanks on the page before? Um, last three blanks? Sam, you can turn it off.